What are max-min problems really good for, you ask? Well... Data science, statistics, artificial intelligence, neural nets, all of that stuff, all of it is built on a foundation of solving optimization problems. Now, here's a classic example that comes from statistics. It's really simple, but it's really illustrative of what we've done. And this is the problem of a best fit line. Let's say that you've got a bunch of data that is presented as pairs of points with x-coordinate xi, y-coordinate yi, and there are, let's say, n of these points. i goes from 1 to n. What we want to do is find the slope of the best fit line passing through them. I'm going to assume that the vertical component has been fixed so that the best fit line is passing through the origin, and it's something of the form y equals mx. Now, what do we mean by finding the best fit line? What we want to do is find a value of m that minimizes the distance between the line and the data points. What we're going to actually minimize is the square sum of the vertical differences between the points and the line. This is going to turn out to be a lot easier to work with than any other sort of notion. So let's define a function f as a function of m, the slope, that is given by the sum over i of quantity yi minus mxi squared. This m is the slope, and what we're doing is we're taking the y value of the data point, y sub i, and then subtracting from it the y coordinate of the corresponding point on the line, mxi, and then we square that difference. Now, why are we squaring it? We're squaring it so that all the terms in this sum are non-negative. That way, any time you move away from that line, it picks up additional cost in this function f, and we want to minimize that cost. Minimizing this function f as a function of slope m yields the optimal slope with respect to this cost function. So then, how do we proceed? We proceed by computing the derivative and setting it equal to zero. But what are we differentiating with respect to? Ah, this is a function of m. So we need to compute df dm. By linearity, we can move that differentiation operator under the summation sign, and we get the sum over i of the derivative, with respect to m, of quantity yi minus mxi squared. Now, how do we do this? Well, by the chain rule, if we want to take the derivative of something squared, it's 2 times something times the derivative of that something. In this case, what we get is the sum over i of 2 times quantity yi minus mxi times the derivative with respect to m of yi minus mxi. Now, because we're differentiating with respect to m, there's just that one m that appears there. And what is the coefficient in front of it? It's minus xi. Therefore, taking that derivative, we get the sum over i of 2 times quantity yi minus mxi times quantity minus xi. And if we multiply that through, simplify it a little bit, we get the sum over i of minus 2xi times quantity yi minus mxi, and that's not so bad. We're still not done, of course. What do we have to do? We are going to take that sum and separate it into two sums. We're going to distribute that summation. What we get when we split this into two parts and move one over to the other side is, on the left, the sum over i of 2mxi squared equals, on the right, the sum over i of 2xiyi. Now, because this 2 appears in all terms of the sum, we can factor it out. We can cancel that from each side of the equation. We wind up with the sum over i of mxi squared equals the sum over i of xiyi. On the left, that m is a constant factor of each and every term. We can factor it out, divide through, and solve for m. m, the optimal slope is equal to the sum over i of xi times yi divided by the sum over i 
of xi squared. And that is it. That is the slope of your best fit line. But wait a minute. We didn't actually check that this was a minimal value of m. We just found that it was a critical point. What do we do? Well, we could argue from qualitative grounds that m can't be a maximum. But let's do it the right way. Let's use a second derivative test. Or rather, you can use a second derivative test, because I'm going to let you check that if you take this first derivative, dfdm, that is presented right here, differentiate one more time with respect to m, what you're going to get is the sum over i of xi squared. That is strictly positive. That means you've got a minimum. And now we're done. But we're not really done. Because as an example of an application to data science, this was really pretty trivial. What if you have a more complex scenario? What if you have many, many variables and you're trying to figure out correlations, you're trying to figure out regressions? Oh, wow, there is so much that you can do with this. This is part of the story that will unfold when you take multivariable calculus. And if you take some data science courses beyond that, if you do anything in AI, machine learning, anything like that, you're going to see very large, complex optimization problems, which nevertheless are addressed using the same principles we have learned here.